हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू इनोवेशन इन मार्केटिंग एंड मार्केटिंग ऑफ इनोवेशन वेर इन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट रोल ऑफ रिसर्च और मार्केटिंग रिसर्च ऑन मार्केटिंग ऑफ इनोवेशन हाउ रिसर्च इज कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटिंग एज फार एज मार्केटिंग ऑफ इनोवेशन गोज एज फार एज डेवलपिंग इनोवेटिव प्रोडक्ट्स को रिसर्च हैज गॉन अ लॉन्ग वे वेर इन वी हैव बीन डेवलपिंग न्यू technologies as well as products everywhere as i have been emphasizing that it's been almost two decades that we have been focusing upon innovation only there are several awards which are being given on innovation disruptive innovation and i have talked about that earlier as well but what role marketing research is uh, you know putting up in terms of driving marketing of innovation is it different is it an add on and that is our main perspective around which we are building up uh, you know our understanding on how marketing of uh, innovation can be complemented with i would not say change in changes in research but using research wisely with reference to marketing of innovation and last time if you remember i talked about you know these two three elements wherein improving customer needs understanding and customer involvement in developing new products has to be brought in as far as Uh, this paper which we are referring to here griffin a uh, josephson b uh, w lillian g versema f bayus b chandy r and spanjol j marketing's role in innovation in business to business firms and uh, status issues and research in marketing letters so this improving customer needs understanding and customer involvement we talked about that briefly then innovating beyond the lab and this is what we are focusing upon at this moment and then there are two more points uh, disseminating and implementing academic research in firms and marketing's overall role in innovation and i would be taking you through a brief case study as well uh, wherein you know uh, this point would be well emphasized so let's see uh, and this is the last point which we referred to moving innovation away from a product or service focus and towards a total solution perspective and empowering the social network as a so, uh, source of innovation so here we are when we are talking about this uh, perspective of you know this aspect of moving innovation away from a product or service focus and towards a total solution perspective there are two three elements which we have to focus upon one is the conventional approach to product development relies on an internal hierarchical framework aimed at maintaining control over the development process we focus upon those kind of things which we are anyways doing the resulting products and any emerging information generated during the project we are reiterating the processes we are talking to people and for that matter we have been doing that in advertising as well you know largely integrated marketing communication and any other area wherever we are thinking in terms of innovations in marketing and marketing of innovation and we have talked about that at length however while such processes enhance the success and efficiency of incremental innovation they fall short in generating breakthrough innovations as the authors emphasize consequently the majority of new product development portfolios comprise mostly incremental innovations which hinder companies capacity of organic growth organic growth value chain perspective value network perspective value web perspective all those things have to be seen in consonance with how we would be driving this innovation through and through for example if you will look at you know around you there is uh, an interesting thing which i have been thinking of for quite some time wherever you go whichever tourist place or religious place or uh, spiritual place you go you would find local handicrafts local food sometimes we purchase you know as memoirs we we purchase those handicrafts wherever we go and those handicrafts are good many a times you know if you are habitually purchasing those you would have a cumulative lot of handicrafts which you would have purchased from somewhere many times you use them scantily for example you have purchased uh, a bed cover a linen which has been crafted somewhere in uh, odisha west bengal uh, those places you know there are different kinds of methods which people are using to uh, produce do these kind of products which are extremely good then you you uh, bring in some artifacts some stone carvings some pens which are being printed you know somehow some key rings and those kind of things and uh, so on 
and those become decorative pieces they uh, occupy a particular space in uh, you know our living rooms or somewhere for a while or or wall hangings in something but then after that those are replaced or those are kept as memoirs or those are being further gifted somehow whenever i look at something in terms of handicrafts which can have a usage value in your kitchens or homes or somewhere i realize that why these things are not replacing the conventional utensils when you go into the history of such kind of products you would realize that these were being actually used for those kind of purposes but now they they have become handicrafts you may say that the, this this is this can be attributed to the uh, lesser of supply or or uh, some some sort of that reason with wherein manufacturing could not be universalized and so on and uh, so forth but if you will look at those as innovative products in contemporary times wherein lot of uh, you know hard work goes in at that particular moment you would realize that they must have a larger worth if we look at them in terms of innovative products which have fundamental value as compared to the conventional utensil which we are using somehow then somehow we are lacking upon as far as the complete marketing research which is required to complement this kind of a thought process which may further help us in generating a communication around these products in comparison to the conventional products which we are using in our kitchens and so on and somehow you would realize that these kind of a products they have that value which can be propelled further try and think about this pick up a handicraft around you pick up an artifact around you pick up a spoon which you had have purchased somewhere kind of you know a spatula somewhere which you have purchased somewhere and try and think why aren't you using this because that is only one you just brought it to keep it with you but if that can have a usage value why aren't you using this and what kind of benefits you would have in terms of if you would use this at all because in uh, you know ancient texts and literature they had some usage value as well as some fundamental value which can be could be associated with the preparation method or uh, i am not sure i am not the expert of that some nutrition value or some those kind of elements would definitely have been there and these kind of things were coming to my mind uh, and i have been continuously referring to that this this documentary blue zones wherein he the author visits some places wherein the conventional methods and conventional tools and conventional uh, you know today we call them artifacts but those kind of things you know Uh, are being continuously used used for preparing food which has a different kind of a nutritional value mitti cool i refer to mitti cool they have several kinds of products which have ancient roots and then preparing food in those kind of uh, you know utensils definitely has a different kind of a taste at least i am not sure of the nutritional value that can be uh, con, uh, you know confirmed through some expert view Uh, by some scientists or or experts who know about these kind of things doctors and ex real experts in that field but still the taste i can definitely you know confirm so that is the perspective associated with handicrafts and those kind of things and when i was thinking in terms of you know putting this point in front of you as far as marketing research goes i realized that that has to be supported by effective marketing research uh we can talk about 3m and today's you know present era wipers or those kind of things those products which have taken permanent place in our homes those are the resultant of extreme marketing research which is uh, you know grounded in finding out the real perspective around the utilization of such kind of products which are very innovative and now they have replaced the complete system many many uh, places you have completely completely replaced cloth based wipers now so how it could be done that is what we are trying to find out and you see whenever i'm talking of these kind of things the business is huge the volume is large the user base is huge and so on so let's see you know when we are talking of empowering the social network as a source of innovation then the second significant avenue of extending r&d beyond the laboratory involves embracing socially driven or open innovation practices and that is what precisely the point is in this approach the company involves both external and internal stakeholders in the creation development and execution of their innovation projects projects probably the the examples of general equipment which we are using around us 
would have involved these kind of things or the insights would have been based on these kind of things at least. In case of handicrafts which has a huge market and I, I remember few decades back today India is a very big software exporter and in other other uh, you know fields also uh, India is doing exceptionally well. But there was a time two decades back when export courses were being delivered largely handicrafts were being referred to as the major product in terms of as far as the export situation goes. So, then the other point is that open innovation entails sharing both the risks and the benefits of the breakthroughs with external partners. Companies engage in open innovation through various means such as outsourcing the R&D function, posting technical challenges or proprietary or open websites for competitions, supporting design contests and maintaining digital suggestion platforms. There is lot to be done as far as you know uh, marketing of innovation goes, but we are emphasizing upon how it we can reach the point where we find out how to propel this innovation, how to market this innovation. Innovation may evolve in due course of time. The in nutshell what we are discussing here is that we should not be only focused upon a particular kind of a product, we should be focused upon the entirety that product would drive. What kind of changes one product may bring in in terms of as far as the complete ecosystem, the household goes or the complete ecosystem goes or you know the habits goes. We talked about Dyson also, Dyson worked upon these kind of things a lot, Mitty Cool we have continuously been referring and there are several other areas which we have been talking about as far as the complete situation goes. But one key word which I want to leave with you and I have referred to that earlier as well, reflexive research, going to the ground and thinking in terms of how well you can generate a real time view for yourself so that you can bring in something which can be accepted before it is produced and the authors also have talked about the same thing and we will just see. Now comes in disseminating and implementing academic research in firms. So, research indicates that various concepts, models, processes and methods related to innovation can have a substantial positive impact on firms innovation performance. However, the application of these concepts and approaches often falls short of their potential. Marketing research on innovation has uncovered valuable insights that can greatly benefit a company in today's dynamic marketplace. For example, studies have established a connection between the innovation process and the generation of increased consumer welfare through enhanced products and reduced prices as well as the reduction of a firm risk and the enhancement of overall financial performance. And that is precisely the point, empowerment as well and looking at the complete ecosystem. Uh, when I was working on a project wherein we were using water mills to grind turmeric, we were being told that this particular kind of an RPM produced you know with the help of water mills basically generates a particular kind of a uh, quality of grinded turmeric or even wheat flour and those kind of things. And that flour is cold because water is passing beneath that and there is a particular RPM wherein does not get heated up and I was told that that lets the flour, the wheat flour hold a particular kind of a nutritious value why aren't we be able to you know why aren't we able to uh, market that with that kind of a perspective that is where we started conducting our marketing research in that area and i'm happy to share with you the results are very promising the price could rise so many people could participate with a smaller produce and the larger output in terms of revenue goes and customer is also happy because they are getting completely organic product with a particular kind of a nutritious value and we scientifically tested that as well that somehow there is a difference. So, uh, results are longitudinal I cannot share with you that right away, but that project is going on. So, however, scholars have noted that the ability of marketing academics to disseminate knowledge beyond the academic community has been disappointing. I probably am one of those scholars whose performance is disappointing in terms of as far as sharing this knowledge goes. That is why I have started utilizing this kind of a thing uh, while disclosing these kind of uh, elements. And because of that kind of a yearning that somehow I am not taking those things to the ground, we came up with a website uh, launched at IIT portal, Him Innovation. And uh, therein we started marketing uh, products in the name of Gharatic uh, Organics. 
Gharat is the water mill in traditional terms which, uh, which we are using for developing a small you know I would not say factory, but a unit wherein we have put up some mechanical machines produced uh, in different factories, but then in consonance with whatever the fundamentals being propelled in those areas through traditional methods. So, we have modernized systems, but traditional value has been kept alive and the results are promising. Uh, I am uh, again very happy to share with you that almost 500 people are associated with very small unit and they are earning good money and uh, things are propelling and now we have graduated into you know uh, ginger also and uh, amla also and, and uh, there are several other products which uh, are being uh, you know put up in as far as the whole scenario goes. So, what is marketing overalls role in innovation? Should the marketing function in fact even concern in, even be concerned with the innovation process and its outcomes? It makes sense what we are talking uh, of basically. You see if I have a small, small area wherein I grow turmeric, I produce a larger organic value in terms of as far as the turmeric goes. Customer is also happy in using lesser of the product with a larger flavor and you know uh, as far as nutrition value goes. So, if somehow things are that way, then it is a win-win kind of a situation and I pay appropriately to the producer and producer is happy because they are earning money wherever they are. They do not have to you know uh, move here and there and, and technology is supporting as far as the information flow goes and, and uh, portals and, and uh, you know they, they are supportive in terms of enabling the marketing at, at large. So, the academic literature notes that the knowledge the marketing function provides about current as well as future customer needs is essential to success of innovation projects. And marketing also places pressure on other functions of the firm to embrace the marketing concept resulting in improved organizational learning and organizational culture the, uh, that promotes improved innovation outcomes and that is precisely uh, what I am talking of in terms of him innovation or Gharat organics and those kind of things. And there are several other people who are working on such kind of things basically. So, that is what we are uh, you know uh, focusing upon and the authors have aptly supported that as well. And because it is a practical experiment which we have been propelling from this side me and my associates and my team and my fellow colleagues here. So, we are testimony to that, we are testimony to whatever we are proposing here in, in front of you. So, and it is alive, so we can share with you the longitudinal results in due course of time also and, and, and uh, you know we are trying to expand these kind of experiments in northwestern Himalayas and so on. Let us see what further do we have store uh, have in store in terms of as an example. So, whose job is innovation? Let us see this case study of General Electric for example. The marketing team at General Electric recognized from the beginning that concentrating solely on advertising external communication would not suffice. That is precisely what one learns when, when you know competition is stiff and when you feel that vacuum when life cycle stagnates somewhere. So, GE found itself in a distinctive position to integrate ideas and teams across the company and to draw insights from the outside world. We also did that. We went to people, we talked to them about their problems, about their products and somehow collated everything and you know we started interacting with them. As a result, they, GE committed to a more substantial effort to compete in the market and solidify GE's position within it. How? Taking inspiration from the culture of unwavering innovation and with a determination to support this innovation through marketing, the marketing team at GE endeavored to be as creative and valuable as the products coming out of R&D labs. Formula for successful marketing of innovations developed, tested and proven at GE was put forward for marketers looking to create value and drive innovation in their businesses. Marketing is the only way through which you actually go for an inclusion wherein everyone participates and you motivate them to participate because at the end of the day everyone's KPA gets key performance areas, they gets materialized if you market well and that is what we are looking at. So, go to the new places, shape the market early that is what GE did, incubate new businesses and models and invite others in. Go to new places, which new places? Any new place for that matter. So, GE's marketing professionals are like pioneers exploring uncharted territories and striving to enhance their understanding of what people need in every corner of the globe. We are practically doing that in some, some cases uh, from this side and I assure you that after few years I would be able to declare that two or three of our projects they have become 
nationally relevant if not globally relevant. As they focused on healthcare products, GE marketers made a significant observation in numerous regions. Electricity supply is where electricity supply is unreliable and the healthcare providers primarily consist of midwives and practitioners in limited training. It is a big constraint and very big constraint still in most part of the parts of the world. Armed with these insights, they conceptualized portable and robust ultrasound machines. Today they are very common, but that is how they went for. And these devices are incredibly user friendly with functionality as straightforward as flipping on an on and off switch aided by red and green indicator lights. Consequently, pregnant women in remote areas received improved care. It is a big step, it is a wonderful step. X-ray machines also pass through these. Today we have you know handheld scanners, today uh, you know these, these portable ultrasonographs and we also generated several portable machines because uh, in, in terms of when, when we are going for these kind of innovations, we realize that we have to go for you know micro and then macro systems as well. And many times marketing appropriate marketing research along with innovation or marketing propelling the innovation makes us realize that, shape the market early. The really good innovations, the ones that change the world need to be explained before they are accepted. That is what precisely I was saying and authors have pointed out and this, this you know Harvard Business Review article talks about this. Need the change, you know things which can change the world need to be explained before they are ex accepted. I am repeatedly using that example somehow I do not know if Microsoft 365 explained the uh, you know usage of dictation uh, app application, I am not sure. Although they presume that it would be adopted well and uh, if they are listening they might explain it to everyone. G's mantras in marketing is mind share before market share, mind share before market share and that is very interesting and important. It is a lesson to us. It is achieved through telling stories across media and methods from data to videos to social media through good storytelling and by connecting with others who share interest in getting those stories out. Marketing team help shape the markets in which G's offerings will be able to deliver value. We have graduated from normal bulbs to LEDs through these kind of things only. Today we have mobile application control bulbs also or lighting also. So the team at GE anticipate what their customers future and present will need, will need and describe it. Long before customers are clamoring for specific solutions, marketing is set, is setting the stage. IBM did that long back. They became a solutions company rather than a hardware company. Incubate new businesses and models. So one of the responsibilities assigned to the marketing department at GE is to discover novel approaches that the company has not previously considered to foster continuous innovation. This could be a straightforward as establishing a category of protected ideas, affording them additional time to demonstrate the worth. You have to justify the worth of something. Yog became today's common practice by being justified with its worth and you know today we are celebrating international yog weeks and yog days as such. This special consideration led to the development of Durathon battery designed to offer backup power for cellular towers in regions of Africa where electricity availability is sporadic. Originally conceived as a battery for a hybrid locomotive, its application was later adapted for various other usage. Now comes in invite others in. How to invite others in? Benefit has to be shown to them and the preceding step is, an, is a necessary step. If you actually put up the narrative that this is going to be and justify that this is actually what you need, this is going to solve your purpose basically. You see somehow I feel that dictation software if would have they, they would have emphasized their need, chat GPT somehow would had would have had a typical kind of a competition beforehand. It is not that dictation software can bring in that accumulation of knowledge what chat GPT ca can do, but intelligent people who are well read can put up those things as quickly as chat GPT can do in terms of as far as dictating something goes. It is a matter of who is using what kind of accumulative knowledge at what point of time. But chat GPT came in and it makes us you just put up the keywords and it goes. So 
while inviting others in at GE approach is not to address every challenge in isolation. <coughs> Partnerships are the paths to speed and scale and that is why it has established connections with the data competition side. GE has taken to market several creations that came to it through its partners, quirky inventors including the sleek arrows air conditioners. These opportunities evolved from marketing people asking simple questions. What are those? Are we open to creating meaningful new partnerships? People do not communicate much with each other many a times and I also do not do that many a times. But whenever I am sitting with eminent scientists here in, in this and I am blessed to be here in this wonderful great institution, greatest in this country and one of the greatest institutions in this world, Indian Institute of Technology, Rurki. And I find that uh, some of my fellow colleague has been doing so much and they demonstrated briefly and I realize, oh, it is a big source of information what can be you know materialized as innovation in due course of time if marketed well. So, are we open to creating meaningful new partnerships? Are we experimenting often in new spaces? Demolishing the barriers between innovators at GE and makers outside the company expands the creative territory. You see the most important thing which we are talking about here is that how to be all inclusive, how to reach to the customer's heart, how to be reflexive in approach, how to make innovations work and what perspective marketing should carry in terms of conducting appropriate research and supporting innovation to be a common man's product, to reach to everyone look at those products, list some of those products and try to find out that when did these products become common for you. For as a start just go to your laptop and try and think in terms of when did laptop actually replaced almost all sorts of computers in your home. Try and find out when did become so common that almost every individual started carrying it. There were computers when people were using it in, in on time to time basis basically and so many people were using one computer. When did it start? Go to the retrospective analysis, go to the details, try and find out what laptop companies did in terms of marketing of that innovation and what innovate, innovations in marketing did they use in terms of bringing it and making it a reality. Today one does not claims that laptop is just a laptop or a desktop or whichever way or simply your companion. Perpetual motion marketing, marketing that connects the company's offerings to markets and in making those connections generate new energy around invention is a minor miracle we can achieve. And for a company whose future depends on innovation, it might be the only way to go. That has been quoted said by Beth Comstock, he is a vice chair at GE and the paper is written by him Comstock, sorry I am not sure about the gender, but Comstock B 2014 November 2, innovations in marketing, innovation is marketing's job to Harvard Business Review. You see what happens is when we are talking about these kind of elements and the emphasis which Comstock gives on you know as far as that the only way to go for a company whose future depends on innovation. If we can somehow emphasize on at ourselves on ourselves that this is the only way to go in case of handicrafts as GE did in the case of their products, in case of any other product for that matter, we would definitely resort to whatever we have been discussing till now in terms of role of marketing research in marketing of innovations and role of marketing in terms of marketing of innovations. I will leave you with these kind of thoughts. I will be coming back to you with lots of insights on additional or you know further kind of topics and subjects which are essential for our understanding specifically in relation to marketing of innovations. I will be coming back to you till then goodbye.